Hello everyone. Today's video is about an important concept regarding database anonymization called T-closeness. This video is part of a series about database anonymization. If you haven't watched the previous two videos on K-anonymity and L-diversity, I would encourage you to do so. You can find links to the videos in the description and on the top right corner of the video. T-closeness further extends on the concept of K-anonymity by measuring the distance of the distribution of sensitive values between equivalence classes and the original database. We have two sensitive attributes in our database, salary and disease. As usual, we anonymize the data and generalize the quasi-identifiers. Remember our example from last video. We know that Bob has problems with his stomach and his comparatively low income based on knowing two of his quasi-identifiers. How can we now measure the degree of which Bob's privacy is in danger to subsequently mitigate the problem? First, let's look at the salary. Salary is numeric data and as such a bit easier to calculate distances between distributions. We see here the original distribution of the salary, meaning all salaries within the original database. Next, let's look at the first equivalence class consisting of 3, 4 and 5k respectively. Also, let's look at the second class, which consists of 6, 8 and 11k. Which of these two distributions is now closer to the original one? Let's find out. The way to calculate this is by using a metric called Earth Movers Distance. It calculates the effort needed to transform one distribution into another. The name derives itself from moving piles of Earth to their respective holes. It calculates the work needed to bridge the distance between the pile of earth and its hole. Going back to our example, the earth mover's distance for ordered data, such as numerical data we have in our case, is calculated as i minus j, meaning two objects of two different distributions, divided by the total number of objects in the original distribution, minus 1. We now have to correspond each number in P1, our equivalence class's distribution, to a number in the original distribution. We can do this at random, but we want to minimize this distance in order to find out the effort required. One minimal mapping is shown here. Let's start the calculation. We subtract the elements we mapped from each other and arrive at 27. Next, we divide this number by 8, which is the total number of elements minus 1. We divide the result again by 9, because we only have to move one ninth probability mass as each element has the same probability of appearing in the distribution, one ninth. We therefore denote 0.375 as optimal mass flow between equivalence class P1 and the original distribution. Calculating the same way, we reach an optimal mass flow for P2 as 0.167, which is less than P1, meaning the distribution is closer to the originals. How can we now deal with categorical data? It's a bit more complicated, however, the calculation is actually simpler. First, we need a hierarchy of the elements. In case of diseases, we can build a hierarchy domain that looks, for example, like this. If we now want to calculate the distance between two elements, we have only to find their common parent in the tree and divide by the height of our tree, in our case 3. For example, the distance between the flu and bronchitis is one third as they share a common ancestor. To calculate the distance between flu and pulmonary embolism, we have to traverse through the graph until we find a common ancestor. In this case, it's vascular lung diseases. We took two steps, hence the distance is two-thirds. Finally, to find the distance between the flu and stomach cancer, we apply the same logic. We traverse through the tree until we reach a common parent node, which in this case is the root node. Therefore, the distance is three-thirds, or one. This is also the maximum distance in any tree using this metric. Let's look at how to calculate this in praxis. Let's again look at the overall distribution and our equivalence class distribution. We see that there are three common elements for which the distance is zero, but there are also three elements we have to move to. In green, we see the elements we already have in our distribution. We need to travel to the respiratory infections. In order to do that, every element has to travel to one of the elements within the red box. We thereby have to calculate three distances. We know from before that the distance between these leaves is three-thirds, so one. 
To calculate the earth mover's distance, we divide by the total number of elements to reach our results, 0.5. Let's look at another example. To calculate the distance between these three values and our original distribution, we need to match gastritis, flu and bronchitis with one of our elements which is closest. We do, however, have to move each element. First, we can see that pneumonia and flu share the same parent node, meaning I have the minimal distance of one third. Next, I can do the same with gastric ulcer and gastritis, adding another third to my sum. Finally, I need to match stomach cancer with the only remaining disease, bronchitis. This distance, as we know, is 1. Adding those three numbers, and again dividing by the total number of elements in the original distribution, results in 0.278, which is less than 0.5 we had before. That means that this distribution is closer to the originals. How can we use that to help Bob in preserving his anonymity? Let's look at the original table again. After removing the names, we can generalize a bit more and thereby losing some utility of the data by having larger age brackets. We can, however, see that the zip code is now a little less generalized. Reordering the table, we can see that we again have three equivalence classes. We also know which class Bob's belongs to. But we cannot infer any valuable information about his disease or whether his salary is particularly high or low. This database is 3 anonymous, 3 diverse, 0.167 close regarding salary and 0.278 close regarding diseases. The series on database anonymization will continue with uh, differential privacy, which I will make a video about soon. But for now, I conclude today's video. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover. Like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.